Hey everybody, Scott Wilkinson here at Cedia Expo 2013. I'm here with Peter Vasse of THX, yep. and you're the, uh, tell me again your job? Vice President of Technology Operations. There I'm you go. responsible for a lot of the certification that goes on with THX. You're in charge of the certification. So yes. this is a very important part of THX. It yes, it really is. It's really the core of what THX is all about and making sure that consumers have a way to identify really premium products and by seeing the THX logo on there. And we make sure that all the products go through a large series of tests to ensure that it performs very well and is a very high quality. And not only that, but that it's easy to use. So part of your certification is a user interface analysis? It, yes, we definitely look at the user interface and make sure that it is something that a, a user would be able to go through and find things the right way so that when you're doing setup, a lot of people get like with AVRs, they get a little scared about setting up a Well, they are pretty receiver. scary. Yeah, they, they can are. be kind of scary. I mean, a lot of your viewers, though, they, they well, wouldn't Well, maybe they not so know. much, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> but there's a lot of consumers out there that really are afraid to get in there and really get deep into the settings and what speaker size is, what, how do you set levels, and there's automatic calibrations that can do some of that, but at the same time, they're not always accurate. There's all, we want, ran through several of those, and some of them are definitely better than others, but there's, there's definitely something about having a user interface that's easy to use, and it's a step-by-step -step process with all the receivers that we have, so it's, it makes it really easy. Does, does THX actually certify the auto calibration? No, we, we definitely evaluate all the auto calibration that's built into the receivers. Odyssey or Pioneer, yeah, Odyssey or Yamaha, Pioneer. Exactly. all the different ones. Yeah. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll measure it, test it in our room, and just get a, an average of, how, we, we do it several times just to see how it changes over time. And what we've learned is that some are, like I said, some are better than others, and if they're, you just have to really be cautious about looking at the settings that it comes up with at the end. If your subwoofer is boosted 10 dB, there's probably there's something, something going wrong. on over there. So yeah. you definitely want to look at it a little closer before you trust and leave everything to the receiver right, to right. set everything. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you guys just recently moved your facilities from yes, the yes. North Bay into the city. Yeah. And uh, so you've got some, some nice rooms, I'll bet, to do yeah, your calibrations yeah, or yeah. your certifications in there, huh? Exactly. So the nice thing about moving into a new place and having a, a real build out of tech rooms and labs and acoustic chambers and demo rooms is we get to really put a lot of input into how it's designed, acoustically treat all the rooms really properly so yeah. that you don't get interference from other rooms transmitting sound into the others. And it's it's good, but at the same time, it's an office space. There's restrictions to what you can do and what you can build, but at the same time, it's, it's miles beyond what you would get if you didn't really really put some effort into it. You didn't uh, build an anechoic chamber, did you? No, no, that would have been, <laughs> that'd be a, a warehouse. We didn't really get that, yeah, that big of a room. I but we, we've got a really nice room, so we're yeah. really happy with it. You'll, you'll need to come by and I visit must, us. I must, I absolutely yeah. must come by. Uh, AVS is based now in San Francisco, oh, so the next perfect. time I come up, I'll definitely oh, yeah. we'll drop give you by the, and have a the visit. Full tour. We'll definitely look at our testing bays, our video lab, all of that. Yeah, we'll, yeah. And you also do some training there, I think, as well. Yeah, right? yeah. Or will be. Yeah, we will be. And since it's just open, we're setting everything up still, but we have a pretty large presentation room. It's open to this, um, the Levi Plaza, and it's a really great, great environment, but we can close all the windows and shut everything down and really have a really close, intimate training session with whoever wants to visit. So it's going to be really nice, and we have all the equipment there, the rooms, right, to really right. make that effective. Now, uh, in terms of video certification, I believe you've recently started doing 4K, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a big, that's that's a big, a big buzzword, one. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a big yeah. buzzword here at the show yeah, and, and yeah, throughout yeah. the industry. You can't have looked at that many TVs yet, because there aren't that many. There aren't that many, but you'll be surprised at how much we've been able to do so really? far. Yeah. We've looked at displays that have been certified as the ones from Sharp, the 60-inch UD ones, uh -huh. and also the Panasonic, which is the the, w 600, the WT 600s. Oh, 600. Sorry. Yeah. So that's those are really two premium TVs. They are 4K, and it took a lot of work to really understand how they're the building process, what they're doing, how they're building the innards of those TVs, and we worked very closely with those engineers to really fine tune and calibrate those to a point where we're really satisfied with that picture. Uniformity is really good, 
color accuracy is really difficult on those LCDs. I was going to say, there are some areas in which 4K is not yet well defined. It isn't, yeah. Like in there terms of color gamut, right? for example, yeah. uh, bit depth, yes, uh, yes, and that sort of thing, so that uh, we're not even sure. I mean, you're, you're yeah. certifying, I guess, to... To 709 yes, right now? Yes, exactly. So we're still rec certifying to Rec 709. That is still the industry standard for HD color. And D65 white? And D65 white. And we do know about the BTU Rec 2020. That's going to be coming very soon. Right. But you're still, we're still looking for um, the sources that are going to be encoded with it. Uh, we're not set we up that we way. We don't have right? any yet, do yeah, we? Yeah, so it's a much wider gamut. We are testing for it as well, just to see where it's at today because we want to know just, just how far it is and giving those recommendations as, as we move along in the development. Well, it's a, it's a big challenge for, for you, particularly because the landscape is still not stable. Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. And all the source devices, a lot of people are asking, well, what am I going to plug into this exactly. brand new 4K TV? Exactly, have you looked at any source devices and, yet? And it's funny, yes, we have. We've been able to, there's a lot of devices out there that do scaling, 4K scaling, sure. Blu-ray sources, and you'll be surprised to hear that during the testing, we we purchased some of these, we put them in and hook them up to these TVs that we just certified, just to see what happens to the image. And they're not all doing 30, 40, 20. I mean, they're not full, showing the full image in certain modes. Really? So you need to know and be really cautious about that because you'll miss some pixels on the edges. Oh, so uh, that's, that's what I was going to ask. What do you mean they're not showing the whole picture? You mean they're overscanning? They're yeah, cropping? Yeah, they are doing some overscanning that you really have to be aware of. Otherwise, it'll it'll push it to the sides or or wow, because that could really image. drop the the uh, detail. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So you got to really keep your wits about you. And during our testing, when we find things like that with products that are on the market, we automatically immediately let the manufacturers know that have certified equipment. Hey, this is out. This is what it's doing with your device, and their our partnership with them is really good in that they they're very fast to respond and make changes to address all of that. Have you looked at the uh, Sony? Uh, yeah, the Sony media media media, media, media server. Media server, yeah. You have? Yeah. So th that one, it's it's required to be used with a Sony display. It, it right? is limited and, to that, yeah, which is so that unfortunate. Is, yeah, it really is, and we're looking at a lot of different devices. We're working really closely with the the um, test equipment manufacturers to m find different 4K sources and, and they're making stuff and we're getting to see really firsthand what they're making. But the Sony, it's something we haven't done too much yet. Yeah. Or the Red Ray, how about the Red oh, Ray? Oh, the player? Red one is an interesting one, yeah. That's, a, that's another one that can't, we're, we're looking at. Yeah, right. yeah. You haven't certified it yet. No, no. I don't know if you're partners with Red or not. No, no, no. So, but you just got one and yeah, you're checking it out. You gotta check stuff you, out. You yeah. gotta check this stuff out and see right, right. What, what things are doing today. Yes. And so that you know what you'd like to see in the future. Right, right. And that's really a, a big part of it. And, and all of your viewership really knows that until you, it's hard to really know what it's gonna do until you get the piece of gear in your room. Absolutely. Connect it all up and find, oh wait, it's not syncing right. What's, what's, the, what's the deal? What's the problem? And there's so many settings in these things. And THX, as a consumer facing brand, wants to make it easier for you. That's why you see that THX video modes for all our TVs. And that just makes it so much easier if you can just say, well, do your pictures, don't, your color doesn't look so right, then there's a mode that's called THX cinema mode. Put it in that mode, and you're pretty darn. You're going to get close. Yeah. In my testing, it's not perfect, but no, no. I don't think it can be yeah. due to very manufacturing variability and of so course. on. But you get relatively close. Yeah, and yeah. And in my experience, you ha you do get relatively close. Yeah. And so that's no, a very that's good, good thing. That's good to think. So in the last uh, couple minutes here, do you have you seen anything interesting at the show? Um, at the show, it's let me see. There's a lot of good stuff here. Um, You've been more more meeting with your partners. Yeah, probably. I've been meeting with a lot of our partners and. It's what what I'm really liking about this show is it's really alive. You know, I was I walked in first day and thinking, or walking up to the convention center and thinking, well, I'm not sure about how this show is going to be, but it's really surprising and it, there's really a good buzz in. in, in Seems the, like it to me too. Yeah, so it's really good to see, and we see a lot of our partners, and they're doing a lot of new product, and that's that's really reassuring to see that they're they're still doing well, and we're still making really good AV products. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for being here. All right, thank you very much, Scott.